Okay, so in this video we want to review logarithms. This is going to be a fairly brief and efficient review of logarithms. Um, and if you're looking for a more detailed explanation and looking in more in depth at the various log laws, you might want to go and have a look at some of the videos from my year 10 and year 11 courses, um, where things might go a little bit more slowly. But at this point, I'm assuming that you have uh, met logarithms of my own class. Certainly I've met them twice before now, um, but at least once before now in some depth. Um, and so this is really an overview. So if you need more depth, go back and look at some of those other videos. Um, so when we're looking at logarithms, notation, I want to start with that because it's something that I find students are really poor at when they're working with logarithms. So this is our notation here. Log we would read that as log to the base a of x or log base a of x. Okay, So the base of the logarithm is a and we are taking that logarithm of whatever is in the bracket. In this case that is x. The thing that I find students are really careless about and it is something that has been mentioned in VCAR examiner's reports in recent years and I want you to take specific care with. The a is a subscript. Okay, what I find a lot of students attempted to write is they write the a at about the same size as the log and then they write the x as a superscript. Okay, this is not correct. Okay, so it should be log with a base of a, so a subscript of a, a smaller letter written lower down. So if you imagine your old, you know, the old writing paper we used to use in primary school, so let's that's when you were starting to write letters, you have the two solid lines and then you have the dashed line sort of break it into a third. And so we know a letter like L goes right up to that line, an O goes to here, a G goes to here. Now when we write the base of A, it's going to sit on this line here. It's a subscript. It's below and it's smaller. Okay. Now the X should be the same size as the rest of the text. Okay, so it's not a power, it's the same as the log. Okay, so can, we pl can you please focus on when you're doing this work, making sure that you are writing those out correctly. The other thing to take care with is brackets. It's something that also comes up in examiner's reports. Um, log base A of X plus 2 implicitly means that there is brackets here. Okay, if what you meant was log base A of X plus 2, then you must write in the brackets. My encouragement is that you should always write brackets, even if it's just log base A of X, put log base A brackets X. If you always write a bracket for whatever's going into the log, you won't forget it when you've got more than one term and it becomes necessary. Okay. All right, um, so what is a logarithm? So a logarithm is the inverse of an exponential. Okay, so we know that any mathematical statement can be written using inverse functions. So for example, if we know an addition fact, for example, 3 plus 4 equals 7, we can write that same fact using subtraction, the inverse of addition. Okay, so if 3 plus 4 is equal to 7, we immediately know that means that 7 minus 4 is equal to 3, or 7 minus 3 is equal to 4. The multiplication, 5 plus 2 equals 10, could also be rewritten using division. It's the same number fact. If 2 plus 5 is equal to 10, from that we immediately know that 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2, or 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. Okay. The square 3 squared equals 9 can be rewritten as a square root. That tells us that the square root of 9 is equal to 3. It also tells us that the negative square root of 9 is equal to negative 3, um, but that's something else. Um, so we know that any number fact that we know using addition can be rewritten as the same information just in a different order using subtraction, multiplication, division, squaring, square rooting, etc. So similarly, any exponential statement can be rewritten as a logarithmic one. It's just a rearrangement of the same information. Okay? If we know that 3 squared is equal to 9, that can be rewritten as log base 3 of 9 is equal to 2. Okay? If 10 cubed is equal to 1,000, that can be rewritten as a logarithmic statement by writing log base 10 of 1,000 is equal to 3. If 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 32, that can be rewritten as log base 2 of 32 is equal to 5. 
the key thing in that rewriting is that whatever the base of the exponent is, that becomes the base of the log. It's no accident that we talk about the base of an exponent and the base of a log. The base of the exponent, the same as the base of the log. The base of the exponent, the same as the base of the log. That's the key. And from there, then the other two things need to switch around. So if it's 3 squared equals 9, 3 becomes the base of your log and it becomes log base 3 of 9 equals 2. So we're switching around the 2 and the 9. Okay. Um, essentially, when we read a logarithmic statement in isolation, we, can, we want to think about it as the exponential. This is telling me that 3 to the power of 2 is equal to 9. Okay. 3 to the power of 2 equals 9. 10 to the power of 3 equals 1,000. 2 to the power of 5 equals 32. Okay, So if I write the statement, you know, log base 2 of 8, what would that be equal to? Well, 2 to the power of something equals 8, so that must be 3. Okay, um, I think that's probably what that next paragraph says. So log base a of x is equal to the power that the base of a is required to be raised to in order to equal x. That's a slightly confusing statement. So a to the power of what gives x? Um, so, for example, log base 5 of 125 can be thought of as what power do I need to raise 5 to to get 125? So, 5 to the power of what gives me 125? And in that case, that would be 3. 5 cubed is 125. Okay, so let's use that understanding of what a logarithm in itself is to complete the following. So, if we've got, let's work in the columns here because each column has a different un an unknown in a different position. So, Log base 2 of 16 is equal to something unknown. Um, so the unknown thing would be the power of 2. So 2 to the power of this thing equals 16. And so therefore that would have to be 4. Here, 6 to the power of this thing equals 36. And so therefore log base 6 of 36 would have to equal 2. And again, 10 to the power of whatever goes here equals 1 on 1,000. Now, 1 on 1,000 is 1 on 10 cubed, which is 10 to the power of negative 3. Okay, so that should be equal to negative 3. Let's have a look at the second column. Log base 5 of something is equal to 3. Okay, so once again, 5 to the power of this thing equals this thing. So that's going to have to be 125. Log base 2 of something equals negative 1. 2 to the power of negative 1 equals whatever goes in here. So 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2 to the power of 1, so half. And log base 16 of something equals 3 on 2. So again, 16 to the power of 3 on 2 equals this thing. All right, so we need to be familiar with fractional powers and negative powers. Um, again, you can go back to older videos from my 10 or 11 sections to look at these kinds of concepts. Um, so if you've got fractional powers, we can think about and a fractional power where the numerator is something other than 1. We can think about that as two powers in 1. 3 on 2 is half times 3. We know we multiply powers when we're applying one after another. 16 to the power of a half is the square root of 16. So that's 4 cubed and 4 cubed is 64. And so therefore this must be 64 in here. Okay, in the final column, it's the base that we don't know. So something to the power of 2 equals 81, so that would have to be 9. Something to the power of 1 equals 7, well, that's going to have to be 7. And something to the power of a half equals 8. Okay. So some unknown thing to the power of a half equals 8. That means the square root of something equals 8, and so that must be 64. Oops, sorry. So part B here, take each of the following exponential statements and rewrite the same information using a logarithm. So if we know that 5 to the power of 4 is equal to 625, it's an exponent with a base of 5, so it becomes a log with a base of 5, and instead of the 4 being on the, on the left-hand side with the base, it now goes on to the other side, and the other thing comes in here. So this is log base 5 of 625 equals 4. This one, 7 to the power of negative 2 is 1 on 49, so log base 7 of 1 on 49 is equal to negative 2. This one, 27 to the power of a third, a third being a cube root, is equal to 3. And so log base 27 of 3 is equal to 1 third. And finally, 6 to the power of x equals 20. So that would be log base 6 of 20 
is equal to x. And here is the key as to how we're going to use logs to solve exponential equations. So you remember in the previous video we said that to solve exponential equations we first of all want to try and write both sides of the equation um, with the, as an exponent with the same base, as a power with the same base, and then we can equate the powers. However, we acknowledge that that's not always going to be possible. So in this instance, 20 is not a power of 6. We're not going to be able to express both sides with the same base. And so we'll need logarithms to solve. And all we do is convert from an exponential statement into a log statement. And look, we've solved for x. x equals log base 6 of 20. That would be the exact right way to write that answer. If we wanted a decimal approximation, we could type log base 6 of 20 into our CAS. So enter, we'll just confirm that it's log base 6 of 20. Control enter will give us a rough decimal approximation. And that makes sense because remember this number over here is what power do I need to raise 6 to to get 20? So we know that 6 squared would be 36, so that's bigger than 20, and 6 to the power of 1 is only 6, so it's clear that x is going to be need to be a number somewhere between 1 and 2, and indeed it is, it's approximately 1.67. Okay, so in general, if a to the power of x is equal to y, and as long as a is a positive real number other than 1, Okay, so when we write an exponent, when we talk about an exponential function, the base of the exponent can't be negative. It's possible for the number to be negative, but by definition that's not an exponential function because if the base of the exponent is negative, when as x becomes, if x is an even number, y is positive, and if x is an odd number, y is negative. And so you get something that sort of oscillates back and forth either side of the axis. By definition, it's not an exponential function. It's not to say that it doesn't exist. The other thing, it, it can be any positive real number. So again, if it was 0, you have 0 to the power of x. Well, that's just 0. That's not exponential at all. That's just a horizontal line. Um, and it also can't be 1. So you can't have 1 to the power of x because, again, 1 to the power of anything is always 1. And it's the same logic that um, zero makes this a trivial statement. One also is a trivial statement. It's a horizontal line, not an exponential function. So as long as a is a positive real number that isn't one, um, then if a to the power of x equals y, the equivalent log statement is that log base a of y is equal to x. And being able to efficiently make this transition from exponential to log or from log to exponential is the key to working with logs and exponentials. Okay, really want to work on getting that right in this early um, exercise. Okay, next I want to review the log laws. And once again, I'm not going to go into these in any depth. They're reviewed in depth each individually in your textbook. Um, and also I have some older videos um, from my year 10 and 11 um, courses, which would go through these things in more detail. Essentially, the key thing is to understand is that for every index law, there is an equivalent log law. Okay. Before I get into the log laws, the one-to-one -one property of logs also holds true, and that is that if log base a of x is equal to log base a of y, the only way that can be true is if x is equal to y, the things in the logs. So again, one of our key aims in trying to solve equations involving logs is to try to write both sides of the equation as a single logarithm and then we can equate the things inside the logs. The other option would be to use this statement to get the equation to this form and then convert to an exponential. So one of those two methods for solving equations that involve logs. In getting to that point, whether we're using this or whether we're using this, we're going to need some log laws to simplify things to a point where we can then um, use those properties. So our log laws, as I said, for every index law, there's an equivalent log law. So we know that a to the power of 1 equals a. That's a really basic index statement. If we convert that into a log equation, that's the same as saying log base a of a equals 1. We know that a to the power of 0 equals 1. If we convert that into a log statement, log base a of 1 is equal to 0. Um, then we get, and as I said, these are not smooth transitions. You can go to your textbook here to have a look at those proofs or some older videos to have a look at those. Okay. Um, the year 10 videos on logarithms go through each of these specifically. So if we have log of a power, so log base a of m to the power of p, one thing we can do is we can choose to, and this isn't always a helpful thing to do, but sometimes it is, and this um, log law is helpful in both directions, we can choose to bring that power down into the front of the logarithm. Okay, If we have log of a power, 
we can bring the power down in front of the log. It's really important that it's log of the whole power. So for example, if it's log a of 2x squared, this is not 2x all squared, that squared can't come down here. Okay, you would need to split this up first using your laws where you've got multiplication, split it into two separate logs, then you can bring the squared down in front of the log with the x squared in it. A special case of this is when we have log of a fraction, so log base a of 1 over n is the same as log base a of n to the negative 1, 1 on n is n to the negative 1, and so the negative can come down to the front, and this is the same as negative log base a of n. So that means if you have log base a of 1 half, that's the same as the negative of log base a of 2. Similarly, if you had log base a of 5 on 2, that would be the negative of log base a of 2 on 5. So the negative, um, a negative power is, takes the reciprocal of a fraction. So 5 on 2 is 2 fifths to the negative 1, and when that's in a log, that negative 1 can come down to the front. So this one is not a special log law in its own right, it's really just a special case of this log law here that tells us that if we have log of a power, we can bring the power down the front. Now we know when we have index laws, if we are multiplying indices with the same or powers with the same exponents, we add the exponents. The equivalent log law is if, is if we have log of a multiplication, we then can add the logs. Okay, so or, or thinking about that in reverse, if we are adding logs, we can put them together using multiplication. If we are multiplying exponents, we can put them together using addition. Okay, so it's the opposite. If we are dividing exponents, we can put them together using subtraction. If we are subtracting logs, we can put them together using division. Okay, so when we're adding two logs, um, we can combine them together as one log by multiplying the things in the logs. When we are subtracting two logs, we can put them together as one log by dividing the things in the logs. Again, sometimes it's useful to be able to use the laws the other way around to break um, a single log up into two separate logs. As I said, if we had the example of log base a of 2x squared, that power can't come down the front as it is, but we could first of all use the rule for multiplying to split it into two separate logs. So this is the same as log base a of 2 plus log base a of x squared. Okay, so these things are multiplying, which means we split them up using addition. And then the 2 could come down the front of this if that was a helpful thing to do. So log base a of 2 plus 2 times log base a of x. Now I'm not saying that's a more simplified version. I'm just saying those are equivalent and that would be um, one way the log laws um, could be used to manipulate that particular expression. Okay, it should also be noted that because logs and exponentials are inverse functions, they un or inverse operations, they undo each other. Okay, so in the same way that if I have x, oops, sorry, if I have x and I add five to it and then I take away five to it, I just get from it, I just get back to x because these are inverse operations. If I have x and I multiply it by three and then I divide it by three, these cancel each other out and I just get back to x. Okay, they are inverse operations. If I have x and I take the square root of it and then I square it, I just get back to x. Again, because the square and the square root are inverse operations. Now, if I have, um, which way around will I do it? If I have 3 to the power of something that is a log base 3, the 3 to the power and the log base 3 are inverses and that just gives me x. And the same is true the other way around. If I have log base 3 of 3 to the x, the log base 3 and the 3 to the power of x are inverses and I just get back to x. It's easier to think through this second one because the x can come down the front and we end up with x times log base 3 of 3 and we know that log base 3 of 3 is 1 and so we just end up with x. Okay, But it's important that we can understand this one's less obvious. It's important that we understand this as an inverse function kind of thing. Um, an exponent with a base of 3 and a log with a base of 3, they undo each other and we're just going to get left with x. Okay, A log with a base of 3 and an exponent with a base of 3, they undo each other and we're just going to get left with x. So that's another key property when we're working with logs and exponentials. Okay, so let's work on some equations that involve logarithms using combinations of these log laws um, and also the two ideas that might be useful, which is we either try to express both sides of the equation as a single log with the same base 
or we get our expression to this form and we use um, and we convert it to an exponential. Okay, so oh, here we are here. So in this instance, I've already got log base two of something equals five. I'm going to straight away convert this to an exponential. So I know the log with a base of two is going to convert to an exponent with a base of two. And then the other two things will sort of switch around. So instead of it being 2 to the power of 3x minus 1, that's not the same as that. It's going to be 2 to the power of 5. So remember, we know 2 to the power of this thing gives this thing. So 2 to the power of 5 equals 3x minus 1. To many students, again, it's, it really comes back to the, that understanding. You're going to be able to work a lot more efficiently with logs and exponentials if you can do that. It is possible to do all sorts of different things here. You could say that 5 is the same as log base 2 of... Um, 2 to the power of 5, for example, and then 2 to the power of 5 equals that. But that's essentially where I've got to from here. Okay, 2 to the power of 5 is 32, equals 3x minus 1, adding 1 to both sides, and dividing both sides by 3 tells me that x equals 11. 2 times log 2 of x equals 8. Now, you could do a couple of different things here, and one is much, more sim much simpler than the other. Students, when they've just been reintroduced to their log laws, love to use them. And so often it would be possible, and often um, the temptation here would be to put the 2 into the power there. Log base 2 of x squared equals 8. But actually, the much easier thing here would be to divide both sides of the equation by 2. And straight away go to log base 2 of x equals 4. Much easier. And then 2 to the power of 4 equals x is our converting that into a exponential statement and so therefore x equals 16. This is going to work but it's going to be slower because you're going to do 2 to the power of 8 equals x squared okay um, and 2 to the power of 8 is 256 I think let me just confirm that Oops, sorry 2 to the power of 8 yep um, equals x squared and so then x equals the square root but we're taking a square root so plus minus square root of 256 and again it's relying on you knowing bigger numbers 250 oh, sorry square <sighs> it's only picking up every second click I do over here Let's try that again control there square root of 256 is 16 so this says that x is plus or minus 16 now another thing that we need to be clear about is we need to go back here um, oh, actually, we haven't actually talked about this before now. We'll talk about this when we look at the graphs a bit more. But if you've got an exponent where a has to be, so I'm looking here, where a has to be a positive number other than 1, if a is a positive number other than 1, so 2 to the power of x, doesn't matter what x is, y is going to be positive. Even if x is a negative number, that just makes it a fraction. So if this was negative 5, this would be 1 on 32. It doesn't make it negative. Okay. So because the base of the exponent is positive, no matter what power we raise it to, do, to, y is also always going to be positive. The implication then is when we're dealing with logs, the thing inside the log must be positive. Okay, so if when you solve an equation involving logs and you end up, when you get your answer, you then need to think about, okay, would this contravene what I started with at the beginning here? Could x be positive or negative 16? And log base 2 of negative 16 would be undefined. Let's try typing into the CAS. Log base 2 of negative 16, a domain error. Okay, so the domain for log is that log base anything of x, the domain is r plus, so the x value has to be positive, um, and so therefore um, we would say here, but x has to be bigger than zero, and so x equals 16 is the answer. But we introduced this whole squared situation, hence the plus minus square root, completely artificially with the very first choice we made here. If instead we just divided both sides by two, we would have straight away got here, and it's a nice simple solution process from there. So again, this works, you'll get there, but we're looking for efficiency when we're working through our maths as well. Okay, part C. Log base 2 of 6 is equal to x times log base 2 of 3 plus 1. Now, once again, it's about efficiency here. What are you trying to do? You're trying to solve the equation, which means to get x on its own. Now, in this instance, x is not trapped in any logs. Okay, this is log base 2 of 6. That's a number. Okay. 
and this is x times log base 2 of 3, that's another number, and then you've got plus 1, which is another number. So essentially, you've got a linear expression here. You've got a number equals x times a number plus 1. You're going to take away that, and you're going to divide by that. Okay. So if we take away 1, log base 2 of 6, take away 1, equals x times log base 2 of 3. Okay. Let's just tidy that up a little bit rather than have a subtraction. So log base 2 of 6. Now 1 is log base 2 of 2. Okay. And we know when we're subtracting logs, we can divide the things in the logs. So that's 6 divided by 2. So this is log base 2 of 6 divided by 2 equals x times log base 2 of 3. And so this is log base 2 of 3 equals x times log base 2 of 3. And then we can divide both sides by log base 2 of 3. And so x is log base 2 of 3 divided by log base 2 of 3. Now I'm not using any fancy log laws here. This thing is a number and we are dividing that number by itself. Any number divided by itself is 1. Okay. So don't get bamboozled. There's no, there's actually no log laws there. We just added the same thing to both sides. Okay, we, we did use the log laws to simplify that, um, and then we just divided. But this, in the solving method, we didn't need to use any techniques specific to logs or exponentials. So don't overcomplicate things. Okay, here in part D, we've got three logs going on. Now, rather than aim for this, sorry, rather than aim for this to convert from the log to the exponential, which is what we've done for all our previous examples, I'm going to aim for this get a single log on each side of the equation and then I can equate the things inside the logs. So that simply requires me to combine these together. Okay, I notice that they are two logs being added. So when we are adding two logs, we can multiply the things inside the logs. We've also got log with a base of e here. You might remember e that is a, speci is a special number. It's approximately 2.718. Um, Gosh, I've forgotten, sorry. Uh, e to the power of 1, control enter, 2.718. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, it is sometimes known as Euler's number. That is allegedly a false attribution. We should just call it e, um, but it's a number a bit less than 3. Okay. So we've got log base e. It's irrelevant to the solution process. So we're adding the logs, which means we multiply the things inside the logs. So we've got log base e of x minus 2 times x minus 3 is equal to log base e of 11 minus x. And now that we've got a single log on each side, that thing is going to be equal to that thing. Okay, So x minus 2 times x minus 3 equals 11 minus x. Let's expand out the left-hand side. That's x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 11 minus x. Let's collect all the terms on the same side. So I'm going to add x to both sides. So we get minus 4x and I'm going to take away 11 which is minus 5 equals 0. We want to try and factorise. Factors of negative 5 that add up to negative 4, that's going to be x minus 5 and x plus 1. And so x equals 5 or negative 1. And again, we must go back to check the domain. Okay. So we know that the things inside the logs, sorry, we should have introduced this formally before now, the things inside the logs must be positive. Okay. So the first log, we know x minus 2 has to be bigger than 0. And so x has to be bigger than 2. So that immediately tells me negative 1 is not going to be an option. We know that x minus 3 also has to be bigger than 0. So x actually has to be bigger than 3. So that's overriding that. Um, and then 11 minus x is also has to be bigger than 0. So 11 has to be bigger than x. Okay, so actually we know that x has to be somewhere between 3 and 11 in order to be a valid solution here. Okay, so let me just move that out of the way. I can answer this question. But we know that x has to be somewhere between 3 and 11, and so x equals 5 is the only valid solution. We'll look at calculating the domains further down the track. The key thing is for you to think about subbing these answers back into the original function and making sure that none of those brackets would end up being negative. So in this case, if x was negative 1, both the first and second brackets would be negative. It only has to be 1, and the whole equation is not making any sense. Whereas if x equals 5, what you have there is that log subbing it into the first one, um, x minus 2 is 3. So it'd be log e of 3 plus log e of 2 equals log e of 6, which is correct. So x equals 5 is the only valid solution.
So when you're solving log equations, you must consider that implied domain and make sure that you think check that your solutions are valid because it is possible to algebraically obtain solutions that actually don't fit within the domain. Okay, example three. Express one plus log 10 of A minus three times log 10 of B as log of a single term. Okay, so we have one plus log 10 of A minus three times log 10 of B. And we want to combine all those together into a log of a single term. So we need to make sure everything is written as a log with the same base so we can use our various addition and subtraction um, rules. So we're going to, one is the same as log base 10 of 10. That'll be plus log base 10 of A. Okay. And then we need to be careful here because we can't add this third log in with this three sitting in front of it. So we're going to pop that up into the power. I'm going to leave it as a subtraction, but I'm going to put the three into the power. So we're going to write it as minus log base 10 of B cubed. You could, if you prefer, write it as plus log base 10 of b to the negative 3. We get to the same place at the end. Okay, so I'm going to combine together my first two logs. We're adding those. So that is log base 10 of 10a. So when we add logs, we multiply the things inside the logs. Minus log base 10 of b cubed. And then we are um, divide, uh, subtracting, so we divide the things inside the logs. And so that is log base 10 of 10a over b cubed. Now I just want to highlight something which I know is often a, a common error here. If this expression had been, let's say we had something different. Let's say you had log base 10 of a minus log base 10 of b plus log base 10 of c. In my experience students are uh, much more attracted to the plus and they look to do that first and they say oh well this is log base 10 of a minus log base 10 of b, b times c and then they do the subtraction which is to divide and so they get that. However when you did this implicitly you added brackets here. By choosing to do that first you put brackets around that which means what you actually did was minus that and minus that, which is not what the question was, okay? So it's important that you sort of work in order from left to right. So this was minus there and plus there, which means you should actually do the subtraction first, which is log 10 of A divided by B plus log 10 of C. And now you can do the multiplication, log 10 of A over B times C, and so that is log 10 of AC over B. So the C should be in the numerator. So just being careful about that, just work from left to right with the addition and subtractions. Okay, the last thing I want to look at here is this idea of change of base. So if we consider the exponential equation 2 to the power of x equals 7, we know we can solve this by converting from an exponential to a logarithm. So if 2 to the power of x is equal to 7, that's the same as saying log base 2 of 7 is equal to x. And so therefore we've solved for x, and x is log base 2 of 7. Now if we type log base 2 of 7 into our CAS, press control enter, we can find that that's about 2.80735 etc. Okay. So not that long ago our calculators couldn't deal with logs of any base. So you in this case can press control 10 to the power of x and get a generic expression for log and you can put any base that you want in there. Okay. Traditionally and if you have a look at a scientific calculator it's possible to do log base 10 and it's also possible to do log base e. Your, cas your calculator will have a button that just says log, okay, and that implicitly means log base 10. 10 is the default base. If there's no base written, we assume it to be log base 10, and it'll also have ln, which is the natural log, which is log base e. So this is log base 10, and this one is log base e, and that will be all you'll have. Now, we also have a log dedicated log base e button. Control e to the x brings up ln, the natural logarithm, which is log base e, um, and also if you wrote just log and you left the base empty, it would be assumed to be log base 10. Okay, the default is log base 10. Um, but we can also easily make the base anything we want. What that means though is, and it really wasn't that long ago, it means though that if we wanted to solve a log equation, we had to work just in log base 10 or log base e if we wanted to be able to get a decimal approximation for that. And so that meant that 
we would perform the algebra using the base 10 or base e. So here I've solved the same equation using base e. You could equally use base 10. So what I've done is I've taken log base e of both sides of the equation. Okay, This is using our one-to-one -one property of logs in reverse. We know that if log e of something equals log, log e of something else, those two things must be equal. So that's our one-to-one -one property of logs. We can use that in reverse, and we talk about taking log of both sides of the equation. So log base e of 2 to the power of x equals log base e of 7. So then we can bring the x down to the front here. So we have x times log base e of 2 equals log base e of 7. And now we're solving for x. x is being multiplied by this log, and so we can divide by that. And we find that actually in solving this equation in a different way, we find that x is equal to log base e of 7 over log base e of 2. And that's the same as log base 2 of 7. So let me just get that and just delete this. So we just found log base 2 of 7 is 2.807 approximately. If I type in log base e of 7 over log base e, oh, sorry, log base e of 2 and press control enter, it is also 2.807. Now if I'd solved that whole question using log base 10 instead of log base e, then the answer I would have come, across, come to at the end would have been log base 10 of 7 over log base 10 of 2. And we find that's also the same thing. We actually could have used taken log of any base of both sides at the beginning. Log base 23 of 7 over log base, sorry, log base 23 of 2, control enter, is indeed the same thing. So what we get here is this general idea of this change of base. So we found specifically that log base e of 7 over log base e of 2 is the same as log base 2 of 7. But I've also just showed you that if we'd used base 10, that would have been the same. If I'd used base 23, that would have been the same. So actually, I could have used any base, b, and they would have been the same thing. So generally speaking then, if I have log base a of x, I can use any other base that I want and I can split it in a fraction. So it's the log base a of x is the same as log base b of x over log base b of a. And we call this the change of base formula. If for some reason we don't like things with a base of a, we can convert to a different base of our choosing using this particular rule. Um, okay, oh sorry. So let's have a look at these two examples. If we express log base 3 of 2 with a base of 2, okay, so we know that log base 3 of 2 can be rewritten as we want to use a base of 2. So it can be rewritten as log base 2 of, now, the number in the, in the numerator is the number in the bracket. So that's going to be log base 2 of 2 over log base 2 of the number in the denominator is the base of the original log of 3. Okay. And so this is 1 on log base 2 of 3. So that means if we wanted to know, which we did, we didn't want to know about log 3 of 2, we wanted to know about 1 over log base 3 of 2. That's 1 over 1 over log base 2 of 3, which means it is 1 divided by 1 over log base 2 of 3, which is 1 times log base 2 of 3 over 1, and so it is just log base 2 of 3. Um, that's quite a, also quite a common thing. So if you've got 1 over log base A of B, it's the same as log base B of A. Okay, That's a more generalised property that might also be useful. Um, part B, use change of base to simplify log base C of 16 e times log base 2 of C. Okay, so if we focus on writing them with the same base, I'd prefer to have the base of 2, and that's going to free the C out of there, and then it might simplify together with this one. So log base c of 16 can be written as log base 2 of 16 over log base 2 of c. And we're multiplying that by log base 2 of c. And actually, they're going to cancel out, therefore. And we've just got log base 2 of 16, which is 4, because 2 to the power of what equals 16? 2 to the power of 4 equals 16. One other thing just before I stop, um, I just didn't quite mention this bit up here. So when we're talking about this whole change of base idea, if you use your CAS to solve an equation, an exponential or a log equation, so if we got it to solve this equation that we started with, 2 to the power of x equals 7, 
2 to the power of x equals 7. Whilst the nicest answer to give is that that means that x equals log base 2 of 7, your CAS has still been programmed in the old ways of thinking, which are we can only use logs of base e or 10, and so it will always use e. So if I get my CAS to solve that equation, it will write the answer in this way rather than in this more streamlined way. Okay, so that's where actually sometimes the, the CAS isn't very useful here. Um, for example, you know, a multiple choice in an exam probably wouldn't give you this as the option. It would give you this. Um, and yet if you solved your CAS, you solved the equation using your CAS, you would get this and you would need to be able to understand and manipulate to get to this point. Okay, um, a whole lot of questions on logs, log laws, solving equations involving logs, some change of base, etc, etc.